The 30th World Spearfishing Championships were hosted by Greece. This was the first time they had ever hosted a championship and it was on the island of Syros. Catching a ferry from Athens, we had about a four hour steam to our destination. Approaching the Amopoli Harbour from the north side of the island, we could see all the beautiful houses that were lining the hillside. The first thing I saw when I approached the harbour was the massive banner for the World Championships. It wasn't a particularly fast disembarkment. We wasted no time and headed straight for the Dolphin Bay Resort. This was kind of like an athlete's village for the championship. The island had a very arid feel about it. Our cab driver told us that sometimes it only rains 10 times for the entire year. It's all very official and this is where I found out that I would not be allowed in the water to film during the competition. I was pretty devastated actually, but cheating so rife in these competitions, they can't take any chances. I meet up with the rest of the Australian team after they have the captain's briefing to go through some of the finer issues of the competition. Safety is paramount for the championship organisers. English, and there might have a great doctor on board to improve the definition. Then it was off to the opening parade. Tonight, the spearfishing international teams will be travelling up from the port to the Patia and having a parade and basically showing who they are and then we'll have a bit of a dinner. It wasn't a bad backdrop for a parade. What is here for? Let it go. Oh, so not going to take you. I can't run, I can't leave it. <laughs> television? No television. Right. Only beers. Right. Right. We are here at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you uh, most looking forward to about tomorrow? Shooting a fish. <laughs> Shooting a fish. Legal fish. We even had a Greek Navy ship join us for the opening ceremony. I haven't seen a better spot than this, <laughs> hey? <laughs> Isn't it an unreal spot? <laughs> the streets were lined with team supporters and what seemed like the entire population of the island's locals. Our boaties were super stoked to be cheering on Australia. There was a lot of stop-start on the march, mainly because cars would just randomly drive through the parade. Each country approached the stage in alphabetical order. When we got there, they announced all the team members and basically showed us off to the world. Croatia has some incredible divers, including previous world champion, Daniel Gospic. Conditions in Cyprus are very similar to Greece. This team was going to be one to watch. Finland were really stoked to be there. Italy had a very capable team as well. Our neighbours from across the ditch. Portugal with ex-world champion Jody Lott. I didn't really know that they went spearfishing in Russia. Spain boasts 11 world champions, including Xavier Blanco, right in the middle. But he didn't make the selection for this team. They decided that he wasn't a deep enough diver and they put other guys in instead of him. I also didn't really know that Ukraine went spearfishing, particularly in the Black Sea. There were rumours thrown around that some of the guys in the Team USA were diving 70 metres for fish during scouting. The team for the host country, Greece. On the far left, probably the favourite for the competition, Yanis Sidiris. The sea mass and Greek flags were raised and their championship was declared open. After the formalities, there was some entertainment provided by some traditional Greek dancing.
When it was all over, it didn't take long for the people to retire to their bed, ready for the first day of the World Championship. We awoke to a beautiful yet chaotic morning. All 75 competitors had their own individual boat, which they had to find. It didn't take too long for the Australian team to find their boats though. I've even got a boatie that looks for me, instead of everyone looking for their boatie. <laughs> Each vessel has three stickers applied to it, representing which country they're from and what number diver they are. How are you feeling? Ah, uh, okay. Confident? <laughs> no, and not nervous at all. <laughs> What's the goal for today? The main goal is not to... He's, what do you say? he's not nervous, not nervous! <laughs> to catch any fish. Fair. No, we enjoy because Finland, the visibility is two meters, so this is... Okay. We like it here, no problem. Each of the boats are supplied with a load of ice. This way the fish are in pristine condition once they are donated to the local retirement village. Today's calm. I can't tell you the strategy, but that's what we're diving. I'm allocated to be on the boat that Graham's diving out of. This is just to keep an eye on him from the surface, as well as to film the event. Boats move away from the harbour out into a little bit more open water once they have found their diver. It does not matter what part of the world you're in, spear fishermen will race boats. Of course this racing meant nothing, it was only to get to the start line. The horn went and it was on again. Graham wants to be first in at this shallow spot to chase these little fish called sargos. Once there's a few divers around, they'll become extremely difficult to shoot. The competition goes for six hours, so I've got plenty of time to get to know my two Greek boaties. I explain to them that bananas on boats in Australia is considered extremely bad luck, but they tell me how to catch the big fish in Greece. Uh, here in Greece, we say for the spare fishing, with this he dives, uh, for a good luck, we we'll have a joke to tell him. If you don't wet first your ass, you don't bring up big fish. <laughs> Sorry, Graham, I have a banana with my boat. Sorry. <laughs> it doesn't take long for the sun to poke its head over the island. We were pretty damn quick to get up that shade. After scouring the cliffs for about an hour and a half, Graham comes back empty-handed. I saw some sargas, but the boats, when the boats come, oh. Are you sure there? The use of a GPS is permitted in the World Championships, so it doesn't take long to get our okay. next course. Just follow that one, it'll take you there. Graham found some eels and sargos here during scouting. He's hoping to find them again today. With some rough translation, I find out that a New Zealand diver has shot a monster dusky groper in 65 metres of water. It's just insane. The fish were really spooky in this area. Obviously, there's been a lot of divers here already earlier in the day. So Graham's decided, I'm going to go out deep, try with the drop weight, see if I can luck onto something off a bommie. Yes, because... Drop weighting or variable weight involves the diver breathing up slowly on the surface, holding on to a large weight and releasing that. He's pulled down to the depths and then he lets go. 
This technique makes it really easy to get deep, but it's also quite dangerous in that you can stay far too long on the bottom. Because you feel so relaxed, you haven't had to swim down 40 or 50 meters to get there. He drifts silently towards the bottom in hopes of ambushing any potential prey. Divers in the competition can't get any assistance pulling their drop weight up. The landscapes and the scenery here are simply amazing. As usual in these competitions, the six hours goes very quickly. He's only got about 20 minutes left, so the plan is jump in the shallows, have a look around for a parrotfish and just see if he can luck across something. That 20 minutes pretty much went in the blink of an eye. We head back to the finish and sign off for the day. All the divers are pretty keen to catch up with each other's teammates and find out how the day went. By the really spook, there were big fish, one to maybe 1.1 kilos, like stonkers. And uh, mate, they were really spooked. As soon as I approached the cave, you zipped out, and that was it. That was my day, the first five dives. I should have shot this parrotfish and blew its guts out in the cave. What's up, yes, I, I can't get my gun in the cave, uh, it's uh, gone too long. Yeah. It's better, it's better. So I got a little yeah. gun, I stuck it yeah. in there, went, yeah. went straight yeah. through yeah. the fish. Four, Four minutes to go. go. I just want my fish to weigh that. Yeah, I don't, give, don't give a rat's ass, I just want it to weigh. I was well and truly cooked after six hours in the boat. I also found the current British spearfishing champion, Kevin Daly. It was bloody difficult. No good. But there's, I've got a couple that will weigh and some that unfortunately just won't. Um, but it was uh, very difficult going. And uh, yeah, but there's going to be some really good catches coming out today. I've seen already some, some guys holding up some groupers. Good fun? And, uh, yeah, it was, it was good. Uh, as long as everyone survived yeah. uh, and, and is back safely, then, then it's a result. It's a good result. We then headed back to the harbour where the day started off. Competitors were to drop their fish off and they would get transported via freezer truck to the weigh-in. We then started to see all the fish from the competition. One of the Italian divers had a really, really big dusky grover. But the show was stolen by the competition favourite, Yanis Sidiris. He had a huge brace of fish including gropers, eels, sargos and a little thing that looked like a red rock cod that we get in Australia. He was definitely living up to his reputation. Justin Lee from the USA had a great string of fish as well. I don't think he could have actually smiled any wider. Each competitor's fish is sealed in a bag with their name tag on it. Then they're transported to the weigh-in area. That's when they'll next be opened. It's been a very exciting day. There's been some great fish come in and we're just about to see the weigh-in. Um, uh, Australia didn't fare all that well, unfortunately, but there's always tomorrow and um, we live in hope of improving our performance today. The weigh-in definitely wasn't a fast process. They wipe the fish down clean, shake all the ice off it, even check inside the mouth because some competitors had stuck ice blocks down there as well. It wasn't quick. There was a fair few gropers that came into the weigh-in, including this one from Finland. Unfortunately, didn't make the five kilo minimum weight for the dusky groper. Ex-world champion Daniel Gospic from Croatia, showing his prowess in the Mediterranean waters. Finally, the fish everyone had been waiting to see, Dave Mullins' massive dusky that he shot at 65 meters during the competition. What a fish. At 17.32 kilos, this fish was going to put him right up in the top ranks of the day. Sidiris had a very impressive bag of fish with nine weighers. With a catch like that, no wonder he top scored for the day. The order of the weigh-in was drawn out of a hat at the captain's meeting. Australia was really far down the list. Gunter was the only Australian that shot a fish for the day, but it was a small parrotfish, he wasn't sure if it was going to make the minimum weight. 
He placed it in a plastic bag to stop dehydration. Unfortunately, this puts you at the end of the queue at the weigh-in if your fish are found in a plastic bag. Australia weighed their fish almost dead last, so it didn't really matter to go to the back of the line. This strategic decision paid off for Gunter and his parrotfish weighed. Thank you. It was then announced that Sidiris had won the day with nine fish, closely followed by an Italian diver and a guy from Cyprus. He was way out in front with 100% and the next person behind him on around 70%. That's a massive lead. But tomorrow is another day. The start of day two was at the same spot that we had the opening ceremony, with the Amopoli Harbour and all the houses up on the hill. Very simple, a couple of shallow spots to go and uh, work through, look at a couple of holes. Hope you uh, pick up a luck wire in the morning get the, uh, the confidence and the, and the nerve settle, give the lungs the uh, stretches that they need, and then it's uh, out to the deep, and it's going to be deep all day. Graham and Gunter discuss with their boaties exactly where they're going to be fishing today, in hopes of improving their catches on yesterday. What's the plan today, Emmanuel? Kill one or two fish, any size, as long as it's illegal, mate. This was about the exact moment that Emmanuel found out his boat driver had been eating bananas for the last two days. No banana. Is it still in here? Is your banana still in there? Do a shit. <laughs> I think it's safe. It was a stunning morning. After a little bit of a delay, we were off again. Graham's plan was to hit the shallows and then head out to the deep. This point here was a very popular spot. There was a mass of boats on it. Whilst Graham was pounding the shoreline, I decided to stick my GoPro down on his drop weight, just to check out the bottom a little bit. The waters around Greece are extremely deep for spearfishing, and we were soon told some bad news. What happened to the Spanish divers is in hospital, probably with hypoxia or the disease. Oh, big dive? Probably. Mm. So he's. The information is scarce so far. We don't know for sure. So he's finished for the day? Yeah. yeah. He's probably in the chamber. Wow. On that happy note, Graham decides to head out into the deep himself. The deep drop has paid off for Graham and he's surfaced with a moray eel. We're not too sure if it's going to make the minimum two kilo weight. Time is running out and it's time to try another deep spot. Once again, the drop weight takes him down to the depths. After half a dozen dives to nearly 40 meters, Graham surfaces with a red mullet. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like this fish is gonna make the minimum weight of 500 grams. All too soon, the competition is over. The last thing Graham feels like doing is pulling up his drop weight. Most divers had reported a really tough day with not a lot of fish. However, some divers still made the most of the day and produced a couple really good weighing fish. Thank you. Boats then made their way back to the Amopoli Harbour to drop off the speared fish for the weigh-in. As usual with the Spiros, there's plenty of chat about the day. So I didn't look around the right way. Actually, it's been a lot better than I expected. I was really nervous coming into it, um, but I'm so glad I did it. It was bloody difficult, 
Uh, I got my ass kicked, but uh, that's pretty much what I expected, and I, I learned a hell of a lot. I, I've managed to weigh a few fish, um, like uh, like everyone. I would have liked to have weighed a few more, but um, so it goes. Oh, we've learned a shit. Like, I don't even know. I didn't know you could what a lung squeeze was. Yeah. I didn't know you could get the bends free diving. And I learned that Mediterranean has no fish, so it's been a, it's been a so it's been interesting. The weigh-in order was reversed today, so Australia was going to weigh their fish pretty quickly. Next athlete from Australia, Graham Carlisle. Red Mallet and Mori. As we suspected, neither of Graham's fish made the minimum weight. Well, Boba. Emmanuel received a penalty for his fish being less than 30% under the minimum weight. Colombia. Some competitors had a bit better luck. Gunter once again stuck with his game plan of bashing the shallows, and he came up with yet another parrotfish. Monster parrotfish. <laughs> Kilo and 80. Wow, well done. Genther Perengi from Australia. New Zealand certainly started the celebrating a little bit early with their flag being backwards. There were rumours that Yanis Sidiris, the guy who top scored yesterday, put in a protest against the guy who was coming third from Cyprus. Allegedly, he had assistance from his other teammate in recovering a big dusky groper. This held up and he wasn't allowed to weigh his big fish. The team manager from Cyprus was obviously just fuming and he was watching Sidiris' every move at the weigh-in. It was a really tense few minutes. As Sidiris top scored yesterday, he was to weigh his fish last today. We all thought we were going to have the results, but no, the team manager from Cyprus put in a protest against Sidiris and wanted all his fish gutted, just to check if there wasn't any rocks or lead weights in their bellies. Sidiris was cleared of any accusations. And everything was okay. Time for the results. <laughs> Second position, Giannis Sideris, Greece. Even without his big dusky groper, Georgius still won the championship. Flags were lowered and the championship was declared finished. The CMAS flag was then handed over to the host country for the 31st World Championship, Portugal. It was now time for the finishing dinner at midnight.
The official trophies were then handed out to all the winners of the competition, but the real most coveted prize of the entire championship went to Gunter. <laughs> Oldest competitor. 61 years old. Gunter also picked himself up a brand new Sunto D4i. As expected, the state of the competitors rapidly declined. After having New Zealand start throwing sausages at me, I retired to my bed ready for my ferry the next day. There was a definite sadness upon leaving Syros, yet relief at the same time. The championship had been one of the most intense three days of any sporting event I had ever witnessed. Unfortunately, Australia didn't fare as well as they wanted to. More preparation and more funding would have greatly increased their results. We have two years to prepare for Portugal in 2018.